Hi guys, Ollie here, welcome back. I am a final year medical student at the University of Warwick. Now, as I'm sure you're very well aware by now, I tend to film in front of my computer desk because of the way that my bedroom is laid out in our student house in which we live. That's where I have the most free room to film. And there's been a lot of comments and questions about this monitor behind me, and this, therefore, I thought would be a good chance to address some of those questions, give you my full review on what exactly this monitor is, why I bought it, what I use it for, whether I recommend it. So I guess without further ado, here are my thoughts on the Samsung CR-G9 Super Ultra Wide Monitor. Let's start with the simply jaw dropping specs. The Samsung CRG9 sports a super ultra wide 5120 by 1440 49 inch QLED panel running at 120 Hz. What does that mean for you? It's the equivalent of having two 2560x1440 monitors running side by side with no ugly bar in the middle. Running smooth as butter due to the high refresh rate with spectacular colour performance thanks to its peak brightness of 1000 nits, landing it an HDR10 certification. All of this is housed in a black plastic chassis that's really pretty understated for a gaming monitor, especially when compared to its newly launched younger brother, the Odyssey G9. Even though it's a curved assembly that sweeps towards the viewer to keep the entire screen in view at once, do not underestimate quite how wide this thing is. It takes up the entire width of my desk without breaking a sweat, so make sure that you have the room for it. The stand is plastic as well, although in a brushed metal colour, it would have been nice if the stand were all metal, but given how heavy the assembly is already, I'm also thankful for the lack of extra weight. If we move around the back, you can see the selection of ports available, including two display ports, HDMI in, and a USB hub, as well as standard audio pass-throughs. I would point out two things here. One is the lack of a USB Type-C port for docking and charging a laptop, like you might see on competitor models from LG. And the second is that once you snap the port cover on to keep dust away from the inside of the chassis, your USB hub becomes almost inaccessible. So I'd recommend using this for things like wireless dongles or your keyboard that don't need to be removed. The stand also hides a couple more features, including an excellent cable shunt that neatly tucks away inside the column of the stand itself, as well as a hanger for your headphones that pops out of the back. And there's also a Visa standard mounting bracket for using another stand if you so desire. So once you've got this beast set up, what's it like to actually use? Well, I bought this display as a productivity monitor, and as you can well imagine, whether it's writing papers, working on large datasets in Excel, or especially for video editing in Premiere Pro, having this amount of continuous screen real estate is just unreal. That's not to say there aren't a few issues with using a screen this large. The inbuilt Microsoft window management tools don't cope well with automatic window snapping. So I recommend installing WinSplit Revolution, a free tool that lets you create keyboard shortcuts to set custom snapping protocols. And personally, I have this set up for three or four way splits, depending on what I'm doing. But I suspect the real questions here are more to do with the media and gaming experiences, and let me reassure you that they're nothing short of amazing. With a colour profile and viewing angles like this, the immersiveness that you get from the wraparound panel is second to none. It's like having an iMac screen while sat at your desk. If you can find video content that supports this crazy 32 by 9 aspect ratio, or crop your existing video to match, there's nothing else that really competes with it. The same is absolutely true for gaming, and while most games might require a bit of technical fiddling to properly support the aspect ratio, it's more than worth it once you get it right. And what's really key to note here is that in these examples the game is not simply being stretched, it's more that more of the game world is being physically rendered, so the experience completely surrounds you and fills your peripheral vision for maximum immersion. And as I've said before, this monitor runs at 120Hz and supports AMD FreeSync and NVIDIA G-Sync to eliminate any screen tearing, and with that HDR10 rating, the colours just look amazing. There's a lot of customizability as well in the well-designed control menu. You use this little joystick on the bottom edge to adjust the settings, which include programmable colour profiles, backlight strength, and a picture-by-picture -picture mode, so you could hook up a games console, laptop, or a Raspberry Pi in my case. In terms of my own experience with the CRG9, there have been a few changes to make. I've had to pick up some separate speakers, these little creative pebbles, as the monitor does not have inbuilt speakers of any kind. 
but I also have had to pay a lot more attention to my posture and lining up the monitor correctly with my physical position. It's tempting to want to turn your head and crane your neck to see everything, but if you are positioned properly, you really don't need to do this. But now guys, the time comes to address kind of the big elephant in the room with something like this, the price. At a little bit over a thousand pounds brand new for something like this is the price of a used car. And I really had to go significantly out of my way to be able to afford something like this. We were deployed, as many of you know, as healthcare assistants uh, for several months during the peak of the COVID-19 crisis, during which time we were earning, and I was able to pick up lots of extra, particularly night shifts, which come with pay bonuses, to specifically try and cover a monitor like this, because the super ultra wide is an upgrade that I've been thinking about making for a very long time. And is that a lot of money? Yes, that is an enormous amount of money, particularly to spend on what is essentially a leisure or pleasure product, something like this. But what I can tell you is that I don't regret it for a single second. Is it complete overkill? Is it absolutely unnecessary? Yes, 100%. But I'm a big believer in investing in quality gear, particularly if it's stuff that you use day to day for long periods of time. That's why I think investing in a good chair, a good computer mouse, a good computer screen is really important if those are things that you use a lot, as you can imagine I do. And during these, dare I say, unprecedented times where you're going to be spending a significant portion of your day looking at a computer monitor, I would kind of argue there's never been a better time to make the jump to ultra wide if you're thinking about it. So that's where we'll wrap up guys, thanks very much for watching, please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to go and check out ollieburton.com which is currently undergoing a bit of rebranding but hopefully all my stuff will be ready for you there soon. Always happy to chat with people, RE medical admissions, medical school, how to study effectively, things like that, just leave me a comment or get in touch using the contact form. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Take care, guys. Thanks always, and I'll see you next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, there are three main ways you can support the channel. The first is by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. That helps me out more than anything else. The second is you can buy me a coffee using my Ko-Fi link, which will keep me awake during the editing process. And then third is you can use my referral code to save 10% off your Complete Anatomy 2020 subscription when you use the link in the description below. My favorite anatomy learning tool, and I use it every day. Otherwise, guys, take care, and I'll see you next time.